You can import Microsoft Word files into your Flare project, but before you do this, there are a few things to consider. First, we highly recommend that you clean up your Word documents as much as possible. One way you can do this is to make sure you use styles in Word as opposed to local formatting. Heading styles such as Heading 1, Heading 2, and so on are going to come in handy, as you'll see in a moment. Also, instead of just highlighting inline text and applying formatting such as bold and colors and other things like that, it's a good idea to create and use character styles on that content instead. Trust us, you'll be glad you did. Also, realize that Flare will name your new topics after the first text it comes across where a new topic is created. For example, the Heading 1 text. But there is a special way to automatically create unique file names for the topics in case you want something different. This help topic shows you how to prepare your source Word documents to make this happen. You should also be aware of how imported image files are named. If you have inserted a picture as a linked image in a Word document, the file name for the image is preserved when imported into Flare. But if you have inserted a picture as an embedded image in a Word document, the file name for the image is based on the topic name when imported into Flare. When you convert from Word to Flare, you're also converting to a new way of thinking. A single Word document might be an entire book or manual with many chapters. Sometimes a document can even get so big that Word explodes. You can use Flare the same way, in that you can open a topic and write a 100-page manual, but the real power of Flare will be missed if you do that. In Flare, you don't typically work with large documents that become manuals by themselves. Rather, you work with topics, which are typically much smaller. That makes them easy to reuse. You'll have many more topics in Flare than you have chapters in a Word manual. So with Word, you're really starting out with a print-first mindset. And the challenge is, how in the world do you convert that print-based documentation to usable online documentation, such as an online help system or a knowledge base? On the other hand, Flare is based on a topic-based authoring environment, where online output is usually the first consideration. However, Flare also lets you arrange your topics in any way you want for print-based output as well. Most people are going to have Word installed on their computers when they import. However, did you know that Flare lets you import from Word even if you don't have it installed? No kidding. For example, Office 365 users can select this checkbox in the Options dialog to enable this. It'll still recommend that you have Word installed, but just in case you don't, you can use this option. When you're ready to import your Word files, open the Project ribbon. Select Import, then MS Word Documents. Select this option if you're creating a brand new project, then give the project a name and location. On the other hand, if you already have a project open, you can select this option to import the Word files directly into it. You can also choose a primary output type, but don't worry too much about what you select at this point, because this doesn't limit the outputs that you can create from your project. Besides, you can always change the primary target later. Find and select the Word files you want to import. You can use the arrow keys to rearrange their order. This will affect where the imported files are placed in the Table of Contents file that's created automatically when a new project is loaded. That's it for all of the required fields, but let's look at the optional features, because you're likely to use at least some of them. On the left side, click Styles. At the top of the page, you can select a style sheet if you already have one, and want to associate it with the imported content. Otherwise, just ignore this field. The areas below let you map the styles found in the Word documents to other styles. Just click the drop-down field next to a style and make your choice. In the menu, you'll see styles from Flare at the top, and styles from Word at the bottom. If you map a Flare style, you're going to end up with a style that has a simpler name, such as H1 or P, but you will also lose any formatting from the Word style. If you click this button, it will quickly remove all of the Word formatting and map all of the styles to the most appropriate Flare style. If you click this other button, it will change everything back to the way it was when you first started. And, of course, the preview area at the bottom lets you see what you're starting out with for each style and the look that you'll end up with after the import is done. Next, take a look at your paragraph styles and think about the best, most logical places to begin and end new topics after the import is done. Then click the checkbox next to each of those styles. Usually, you want the new topic breaks to occur wherever you have styles such as Heading 1, Heading 2, or even Heading 3. This is why we said a little bit ago that it's useful to use heading styles in your Word documents. Go back to the left side and click Advanced Options. The options on this page let you provide Flare with information about how you want your files to be imported. Most authors will find that they can ignore some of these fields, but others might be very useful for you. For more information about each section, click the little Help icon. After you click Finish, you'll see a dialog that shows the files that will be created as a result of the import. If you're happy with it, click Accept and you're done. In the Flare project, notice that your settings were automatically saved in a new import file. That file is kept here in the project organizer. 
You can open this file anytime you want to re-import changes from the Word documents. Now that your Word files have been imported into Flare, what's next? There are all kinds of things you can do. This includes adding a variety of content and features to your files, designing your project, developing targets, and building output. This online help topic talks about each of these basic steps.